Hi everybody and welcome to another short clip of palliative education and today what we're going to be talking about is opioid conversion ratios. Now having an understanding of, of conversion ratios in, in opioids is really crucial when we're looking after palliative care patients. Most of our patients are going to be on opioids of some description and it's really common that we've got to convert between opioids. That might be um, because they're developing toxicity with an opioid um, or it might be just to improve their, their, their um, analgesia effect. Um, but swapping between opioids and having a change between oral formulations and, and parenteral formulations is a really um, common thing that we've got to do and it's really important that you have some understanding of how these opioids are, are converted and what their sort of levels of potency are. Now, there are, you know, a number of um, opioid conversion charts and they're really useful and, you know, I would recommend that if you're um, doing this for the first time, you really should look at an opioid conversion chart and, and, and have that as, as, a, as a reference just so that you know you know you're doing the right thing. Having said that, I think there's no substitute for actually having an awareness of what the conversion ratios are yourself and being practiced in going through the maths if you like um, and doing the conversions from scratch. Part of the reason I say that is really a safety issue. Um, conversion charts, when you're feeling tired, when you're feeling stressed, can be misread. And it's really useful to have, if you like, a sort of safety net or to develop kind of, you know, almost a palliative spider sense that, you know, if you've done a conversion off a conversion chart and it doesn't feel quite right, that you check it again. And having an understanding um, of, of what the conversion ratios are and having them kind of sort of um, memorized, if you like, I think is a really useful thing to do. So, the other thing to say about opioid conversions is they're always changing. And certainly, the ratios that you see on opioid conversion charts um, at present are a little bit different to when I first started my training. And it's not that the drugs have changed, but as we do more and more research, and to a certain extent as we deal with different groups of patients, um, our understanding evolves a little bit. Having said that, it's important to recognize that these are not absolutes, these are rough guides. There is a margin um, in terms of, of safety and efficacy around these conversion ratios. Um, but what I'm gonna do today is go through kind of what our current understanding is. I'll also explain to you kind of where I perhaps, um, as a palliative care physician, deviate a little bit and where perhaps some of the, the current conversions um, are different to perhaps what, what I use on a day-to-day -day basis and are different from how I was trained. Just so that you get a feel for kind of what the spectrum is. Now, the first thing to say um, when we're looking at converting opioids is it's very useful to have an understanding of this concept of what we call um, oral morphine equivalent. And really that's kind of your benchmark if you're converting between opioids, it's very useful to be able to reference to that, to, well, what's that in terms of an oral morphine dose? And so what we're gonna do is we're gonna go through this table um, and really sort of look at, well, what's the oral morphine equivalent of, of the different opioids? Um, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna sort of work on the basis of, well, what is 10 milligrams of an opioid equal to in terms of oral morphine? So let's have a look at this table. Um, obviously, 
The first box is dead easy because 10 milligrams of oral morphine is equal to 10 milligrams of oral morphine equivalent. Let's have a look though at what happens when we go parenteral. And really the first neat trick to explain here is that whenever you're converting from an oral opioid to a parenteral opioid, it's always twice as potent. Okay, whether that's morphine, oxycodone, hydromorphone. You go from an oral preparation to a parenteral preparation, always twice as potent. So 10 milligrams of subcutaneous morphine is actually the same as 20 milligrams of oral morphine equivalent. Okay, so that's fairly straightforward. Now, the next opioid we'll have a look at is oxycodone. Now, oxycodone is a really common opioid that we see. Um, a lot of you will be familiar that with it uh, is the combined preparation of naloxone. So it's out there a lot. Um, and oxycodone is an opioid that is more potent than morphine. Now, if you look at the current conversion charts, they will tell you that the ratio is about 1.5. When I started my training, the agreed ratio was actually two. And that's still the ratio that I use in some circumstances um, today. But let's work on 1.5. So 10 milligrams of oral oxycodone is going to be 15 milligrams of oral morphine equivalent. And again, if we follow the rule that I mentioned a few minutes ago, parenterally always twice as potent. Um, the subcut preparation, or even IV, is going to be twice as potent as the oral, which means that 10 milligrams of subcutaneous oxycodone is actually 30 milligrams of oral morphine equivalent. Okay, so those ones have been fairly straightforward so far. Now, sometimes we use hydromorphone. Um, probably the most common um, situation you'll see hydromorphone being used in is patients who have developed um, renal impairment, because we think it's one of the safer uh, opioids to use in that scenario. Now again, when I first started training, um, there was a really weird conversion ratio for hydromorphone. It was something like 7.3 to 1. Um, the current conversion charts would say that hydromorphone is five times as potent as, as morphine. So again, if we've got 10 milligrams of oral hydromorphone, that's going to be 50 milligrams oral morphine equivalent. And again, if we use the same rule for converting uh, from oral to parenteral, that's gonna mean that if we've got 10 milligrams of subcutaneous hydromorphone, that's the same as giving a patient 100 milligrams of oral morphine equivalent. You're starting to get an idea of just how potent hydromorphone can be. So, just to recap on these three opioids, because these, the, these are the sort of three opioids in terms of oral and subcutaneous preparations that you're most likely to see, there's some fairly well-grounded conversion ratios. Um, oxycodone, one and a half times as potent as morphine. Hydromorphone, about five times as potent as morphine. And again, the conversion between oral and subcutaneous preparations it's always twice as potent when you give it in parenteral form. There's one opioid that you might come across though that um, is a little bit more tricky and that's fentanyl. Now fentanyl you don't get an oral preparation but you do get it um, in a transdermal preparation and you can get it parenterally. And, and essentially in terms of of the patches, that's almost the same as a parenteral formulation. Fentanyl's incredibly potent, um, and 
Um, certainly this is the one where you've got to be fairly careful with the conversion. Um, Mendel is so potent that we're not measuring in milligrams, we're actually measuring in micrograms. So for the purpose of this explanation, we're going to look at not 10 milligrams of fentanyl, uh, but 10 micrograms. And really the figure that you need to be thinking in your mind is that 10 micrograms of fentanyl, whether it be parenteral or whether it's in a patch, is the same as an oral morphine equivalent of 1.5 milligrams. So just to sort of illustrate that with an example, if you've got a 25 microgram patch, now there's not 25 milligram, micrograms of fentanyl in the patch, that's a delivery rate per hour. So a 25 microgram patch delivers 25 micrograms of fentanyl per hour. Which over the course of a 24 hour period means that a patch like that delivers 600 micrograms in 24 hours. So again, if we use this conversion ratio and say that 10 micrograms is 1.5 milligrams, if we apply that to 600 micrograms of fentanyl, we get a daily consumption of about 90 milligrams of oral morphine. And that slap bang in the dosage spectrum that's published for a fentanyl patch of that dosage. So it gets a little bit tricky with fentanyl, um, but I think this is probably the easiest way to think about it. Just have it as 10 micrograms is a milligram and a half of morphine. And if you bear that in mind, that's a fairly straightforward conversion to do. Um, even with my years of experience, when I've looked at conversion charts that try and sort of give you a conversion for fentanyl, it gets really, really complicated. So I much prefer sort of using this sort of um, conversion. So really important again, having some understanding, just getting an appreciation for how um, potent the various opioids are. And of course, if you're doing this or you're for the first time or you're not sure, then back that up with a conversion chart and make sure that what the chart says and what your calculation is in, in your head is, is matching up roughly equal. Okay, well, I hope that's been a help and I look forward to seeing you for another short clip of palliative education in the future.